The PM and the President are entirely agreed. Every intelligence man all over the world who's on our side is being put onto this operation. Operation Thunderball, they're calling it. Hello, dear listeners, and welcome back to the James Bond Complex, the podcast where we study and appreciate the James Bond phenomenon in all its shapes and forms, from Fleming to film, and everything in between. Oh, um, I'm one of your hosts, Edgar. I'm Matt. And this week, it's been a while since we've been in the saddle, all, over a month at this point. Yes. And I was very much looking forward to this recording session because both the book and the film uh, we will be discussing today uh, are of great interest to me for, for various reasons. The book is Thunderball, released in 1961, written by Ian Fleming, <laughs> although there's a lot we can talk about with respect to who actually wrote this damn thing. Um, but before we go any further, uh, since I never read the books, I need you to tell me what happens. <laughs> his health deteriorated by his excessive drinking and smoking. Bond is ordered by M to add to Shrubland's health farm in order to regain his strength. Meanwhile, Ernst Stavro Blofeld and his organization Spectre are launching Project Omega, the theft of two nuclear bombs from NATO. The operations director, Emilio Largo, has corrupted pilot Giuseppe Petacci in order to get the weapons and hold the word at ransom. Bond is then ordered by M to head to Nassau as he suspects that Spectre hid the bonds over there. In the Bahamas, 007 teams up with Felix Liger. Their investigations leads them to Largo. His cover story as a treasure hunter seems fishy to them. Dabino Petacci, Largo's mistress, and the sister of the NATO pilot that was murdered after the theft is seduced by Bond and turns on her former lover when she learns the truth. Bond, Leiter, and a unit of Marines attack Largo and his men and stop them from moving the bombs out of their hiding place. Bond is saved at the last minute by the quick intervention of Domino, who harpoons the villain for her revenge for her brother's uh, murder. Bond and Domino then spend some much-needed R&R together. Um, so thus ends the Thunderball. Mm -hmm. um, now this this is a funny one. This is a funny one. Now, it's a weird one. As, as I've said for a few episodes in a row, we're now in the phase of the books I've only read once and a while ago. Uh, so I hadn't forgotten everything. I remembered the submarine at the end. Mm -hmm. I, I, re I remembered what was quite different from the film. Um. Now, my general impression is I think it's a good book. I think it's fun. It's uh, it's it's good. It's good. Uh, but it's different. Is, is it just me, or does this feel like Fleming? It feels like the treatment for this book would have resulted in like a 150-page novel, and so Fleming decided to add these little passages to make it a 250-page novel. They're fun passages, and we'll talk about them, but I oh. feel like... The core of this book story is about a hundred pages. <laughs> it, it, it's 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 a problem with that story in all its interpretation. It, it, it shouldn't take that much time to tell that story. No, I mean, just for instance, and again, I'm going to preface whatever criticisms I might have of the book by emphasizing that as individual passages, they're quite entertaining. Uh, like the start of the novel where Bond is is ordered into M's office, and then I think M says James instead of 007, yes. and that's sort of like, oh, shit, what's happening? Why is he calling me James? And he says, you know what? I'm going to send you to this clinic. Just look at me. I look fantastic. I feel fantastic. And, and Bond is like, what's wrong with the old man? Like, what's – is he off his rocker? Why is he sending me to a health clinic? And, it, it you know, it says a lot about M. It says a lot about Bond and how he's – uh, for as adventurous as he is, he's also a little bit stuck in his own ways and doesn't want to go to this clinic. And it kind of makes – it's a pretty comedic scene just because it's such a stark contrast from maybe previous M mm -hmm. scenes. So I enjoyed reading it. I liked it. At the same time, I'm like – I remember the, the general guideline uh, – the general lines of this story. This has nothing to do with the story. This is – it feels like it's a short story that – yeah. They added on top of a... Which is funny because you know what I thought of when I was reading this? And, and those criti criticisms, so to speak, reservations uh, came to my mind. 
we're reading the first book after his collection of short stories. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if he said, well, I do want to continue novels in long form, so why don't I just take some of these short stories and shove them in this book? Like, I wonder if, I'm wondering if there's a little bit of that at play. And, and we'll, I think we'll, we'll do an episode on the behind the scenes of uh, Thunderball, but... Yeah. Basically, it was a script that was turned into a book yeah. and a lawsuit in, ensued, uh, but it's not entirely Fleming's voice no. in the novel. And no. I, I think it kind of shows from time to time. There's a little, a little bit n notions. I'm like, yeah, Fleming wouldn't, like, there's nothing like that. And the introduction of Spectre is uh, a big, big. Um, it's a big thing. It's a, it's a huge thing because th they'll be around much like uh, Smirsh were around for a good number of the of the books we've read already now they're sort of well, they're i think they're maybe referenced in passing in this book but specter is the enemy for this book and i think two if not three other ones and some of the cultivation novel actually brought them back so so uh, this is the start of this legendary iconic terrorist organization that uh, Bonus had to foil a number of times and this is their introduction in addition to being the introduction of Ernst Stavro Blofeld, uh, who doesn't is not described in, in this novel as we know him in in, in the um, he has hair. In films. He has hair. Uh, he seems his, his eyes like they see. It, feel, it feels like there's an. I'm already seeing a trend. Every Bond main antagonist has eyes where he can he can see through you. <laughs> they all have these eyes. His eyes are black. Yeah. I think he has very pale skin. Um, It's a funny description. Uh, He's actually born on the uh, same date and year as Fleming's. May yeah, little inside joke. May 28th, I think, uh, 1928 it's or something a, like that. I, I don't know if it's a choice because uh, as the author, he's the one who decides what adventure, what, where, what am I going to do with James Bond, what trouble I'm going to do. So, And that's more or less what Blofeld serves as a character, what trouble I'm going to cause for James Bond. Yeah. So I know it's a little bit meta. There's a lot... Of meta elements to that uh, story. I do like the description of the uh, non-profit organization that's being used as a front for Spectre. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I, I think I have the note there. It's kind of cool. Firco, it's like uh, Fraternité Internationale um, contre. Um, le, wait, I got it here. Um, no, Fraternité Internationale de la Résistance contre l'oppression. That's and it's. <laughs> That means everything and nothing. It means everything and nothing, but also if you're uh, if you are a terrorist, you're being oppressed. So it kind of fits also <laughs> as it's so generic that have you a home could, for you. Yeah, <laughs> and I, they're they're basically, if I understood, they are uh, their cover is that they're um, putting people in contact with p uh, people that might have been lost during the war yeah. or this. That removed, so that's so you can you can actually so they they have an actual bit well business so to speak they actually have they have an actual operation set up you can actually go there give them a name and, and, and I guess a description of an individual who partook in the war as a soldier or what have you and they they have the means to find the records of whatever happened to this person so they they know what to do if someone actually shows up trying to use them as for what they're pretending no to be yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty funny. And well, that's the address I, I googled because it. I, I think they mentioned the Boulevard Osman and the address one one thirty six, and that's the the address. You can actually go there. It's one thirty six Boulevard Osman in Paris. Mm. Their headquarters, their their French headquarters. Because yeah. by the end of the story, uh, but the impression I got is that more or less, like Spectre has been dismantled. Uh. Well, it, it feels Blofeld like... Blofeld uh, ran away, but everyone else that was there or... the it's like the end of the You Only Live Twice, the film. Like, the whole volcano blows up yeah. and Blofeld goes away, but he's not really done because he's seen him in the next... So it's like, it's like that. Like, as long as Blofeld is around, Spectre will be around. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a funny one, too. That, well, we probably shouldn't get to the end of the book. We've barely started the book, but that, that, that sort of struck me as a little bit curious where Felix is like, how you doing, James? Oh, by the way, Blofeld got away. Like, Okay, yeah. <laughs> who's Who? Blofeld? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's it's weird. Mm. Mm. Um, so we go to Shrublands. Yeah, Shrublands. Um. <laughs> the rack. The rack. I mean, that's 
Well, first off, he takes a pass at. Um, is, yeah, her name is Patricia Fearing. Mm. It's in, in the book as well. Yeah, in the movies also. All right. Um, uh, he takes a pass at her, but he mm-hmm. doesn't sleep with her, if I understood correctly, in the book. Uh, he, again, I said going back to what you said about these passages that don't feel very Fleming-esque, I think he does, but it's after he's left. There's some. There's a line about, well, after he left, Bond uh, made good on wanting Beggs and Aiken and that nurse or something like that. Oh. And I was like, oh, so I guess he did sleep with her? Oh, I uh, missed that part. But it's, it's, it's a line. It's one line. In a like a twenty line paragraph, and as, and as uh, I tell you, I I listen to these as audio books, so that, that sometimes I mm, I uh, might miss a few details. Uh, that, that Jason said, Isaac does should have been James Bond. That's all I, I say. know. You've told that devil. You said that before. <laughs> I say that with every book I listen mm. to. Um, but there's uh, we actually get to meet the guy who who leads this, um, who leads it, who manages Doctor Wayne, I think something like that. Yeah. Very good-looking fellow, despite his advanced age. So you get the sense that the, these people, whatever their methodology is, they are keeping people healthy. And and uh, he, uh, he, he uh, I think he, does he, he's drinking tea. He hates mm. tea, but he sort of gets to appreciate it to a degree. It's funny. I do think this passage is quite funny um, in the sense that Bond is doing most of the things he hates, like eating well, <laughs> drinking well, staying active. It's... And... And then when he goes, I know I, I'm skipping ahead a little bit. When then he goes back home, and his uh, his his uh, maid uh, May, I mean, she, she sees him as a different man, but not for the better. Like she doesn't like this new Bond. And I was like, "What do you mean? I feel fantastic. This is great." And was right all along. Like this, it's a surprisingly funny book. Yeah, no, it, 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 it's uh, what also plays with the notion that the the. Uh, it, often in fiction, heroes uh, there's a cost for them to be a, a hero. It's often physical. I'm always I'm going to reference the Batman movies, but like ba- Bat in the Dark Knight, there's you, there's a physical cost for for Bruce Wayne to be Batman. He, his uh, knee is destroyed. Um, it's okay to talk about Batman. We've actually <laughs> launched our Batman podcast. <laughs> he he has uh, no courage on his joints, so he's uh, he's a broken man. But he he has to be Batman. He has to be broken. He has to continue. And it's the same thing with Bond. Like you, you, you can feed Bond all the uh, uh, carrots you want, but eventually he needs uh, to to smoke, drinks, uh, needs drink bacon. Uh, yeah. <laughs> needs bacon to 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 be to perform as a hero and it's also uh, uh, the description of his health at the beginning of the story is based on fleming's own uh, report because oh, yeah. he went to yeah he went to a health farm in the 1950s and it, it is based on his experience there he tried to get healthy for a little while mm. but didn't take obviously because he started <laughs> at 56 yeah no unfortunately that, that's you know i'm i i my knowledge of of uh biology and medicine and this and that is is limited at best so i, I didn't know that the uh the medical report uh, that james bond has in this book it reflects that of fleming i mean bond, bond is not in good shape yeah no he's really not in good shape it's it's worse because it's not bond's supposed to be what 35 it's probably more like a man that's 40 yeah. 45 flash and who has not been taking care of himself yeah so it's not but it's still it's when he describes the beginning how much he's coughing and Mm. like general uneasiness like he's hung over and he's Mm. in constant pain like dude just stop it stop the drinking come on fleming i wish i had a time machine just slap him around stop it oh but i i love i love how it's one of those things where when you start changing your habits and it's hard. I mean, I'm trying mean, to personally change my habits. It's hard. I've I've given it a bit of a, a bit of a go myself, and and some of those uh, decisions you you feel you have to make or, or really should make. Some of them are not easy, and the alternatives are not necessarily uh, as pleasurable as we you'd want them to be. But what I found funny about ha- having myself about, about a year and change at this point, I really changed my habits. I, I really don't drink like what I used to. I don't really eat what I used to. Um, what I find funny about this passage is how Bond, despite himself, kind of like, oh, it's tea time. Oh, I need that tea now. Like, but you hated tea, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's a funny passage. Um, but we need to, we need Count Lippi. Count Lippi. Who's a bit of an interesting character in this, really? in this version. 
He has that little thin mustache. He's very. He has. He has the face all women would kill for. I don't know what Fleming. How Fleming writes it, but yeah, it's a very dashing personality, although very short tempered. Yeah, and and he he's. We've learned that he's actually a member of Spectre mm. eventually, and it's complete coincidence. Yeah. Yeah, the, at the very, very end of this entire passage, there's like a little mini paragraph for, well, this series, of, this this encounter between Bond and Lippy uh, sent off a, ch- it was a so it was a chain reaction that would, you know, threaten the world. Like, and it's <laughs> okay. And it's <laughs> honestly, they, they, nah, it's meaningless. Again, you know, it's like you know what, you know what this is like. This is like the film, the uh, Thunderball, the book. Is like uh, Spectre the film. I love most of the scenes. Stitch them together to make that two and a half hour movie. I'm like, I don't know if this is the best, movie, <laughs> but I like the scenes. It's yeah. weird. Um, but uh, so we go back to uh, to M. Mm-hmm. And, oh, actually, you know what? There's a Spectre meeting. Yeah. Well, the, coincidentally, the chapter is called Spectre. Yeah. I thought I saw the Spectre of Defeat. <laughs> And um, this is our introduction to Blofeld. And there's a, the, 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 he goes through, they go through his origins. Yeah, the whole story. The entire story. And it's funny that they never, never brought that story. It, like, because he's, the thing they put in Spectre is complete BS. I hate that he's a brother. I hate that he spent the 20 years planning a revenge against James Bond. It's completely ridiculous. And when he reveals his name, my name is Ernst Tavo Brovel. Except for dudes like you and me, for the common viewer, uh, mm. it means nothing. Yeah. It means nothing. And he, I, I, it's like uh, in Star Trek in Two Dark my name is Khan. It means something if you're a trekker. And I it, made it even worse when he went. <laughs> yeah, I remember that part. Uh, <laughs> um, and uh, it, this is so much more interesting than anything they've done in any, any movie the fact that he's uh, he's a war criminal, basically. Yeah, he, co- much. he worked against he's a hustler, bo- actually. Both sides. Um, he, he erased his identity, which I found fascinating. Yeah, he, he goes back to the church or something like that, where his birth records are yeah. later on, and he gets rid of them. <laughs> I, I, it's not bad. I, I found that extremely fascinating. I wish they did something similar to that. And I, uh, like I said, I like that he's older than James Bond, and he's almost like a father figure to to james bond because he's, he's all older and he's like i said he's all oh, father figure i mean they don't even meet i mean uh, i know but eventually that's the it's often it's more or less what happens it's, remember in uh, casino while you have uh, a shift goes oh my dear boy they always have that paternalistic um hmm. a- approach to uh uh, bond. That's why most of the villains are older than James Bond, and when they get in the same age, or I, actually sometimes younger, in the movies, it's weird. It, it, it feels like it goes against the norms. So that's that's my theory on on on, on the relationship. The, the idea is that the older the villain, uh, the more seasoned he is in his nefarious ways, the more experience yeah. and victories he's had. That's why he or she is as powerful as they are, which makes them even more. Uh, uh, threatening to James Bond. That's more elo- eloquent than I, what I just said, but you, I agree with that, sir. I'm happy that you do agree. Otherwise, we would have started one the hell of a fight. <laughs> uh, and I love that he kills his uh, henchmen mm. because they kidnapped... Uh, do you remember what her... They raped a girl. And one of them raped a girl. Oh. And That's kind of an interesting uh, little moment there because uh, I, I, I actually appreciated that moment for, for reasons I can't really fully explain uh, but Blofeld decides to uh, give shock treatment uh, to, to this uh, member I think it was the Kors the Kors uh, the division I don't remember his uh, number um, and he says oh, and I also that ransom that the parents paid I paid f- half of it back with an apology letter I'm like that's kind of return- nice <laughs> even though you're trying to take over the world <laughs> Like it's Spectre, they're bad, but they have principles. They have I'm not a, sure what the goal code of Fleming's of goal. Yeah, well, I don't know what Fleming's goal there is, but I think it's I I don't know. It, it's it's honestly it's just enough of a curveball that you go, oh, he's, uh, he's uh, not that bad. Um, 
Okay. It's, it's Roger Moore at the end of A Spy Who Loved Me. So oh, anybody with this kind of a bulge can't be all that bad. It's like, well, anybody who pays back half the ransom because their daughter was raped can't be all that bad. <laughs> but they're sneaky. They're stealing nuclear war. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'm... Um, Always forgiven. And, and he, he takes um, some pills uh, to... to, to, to no, it's okay. A, 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 is it a pill or a candy or a breath mint? Like a breath yeah, mint. Yeah. yeah. Whenever he's going to give bad news, he takes a breath mint. I think that's how Fleming describes yeah. it, which is kind of a weird little tick. But it's cool. I, I like those little, those little details. So Spectre, by the way, is a organization that has – I don't remember how many of them there are that are numbered. But essentially, there are these – not divisions, but it's almost as though there's, uh, the, there are three members that are, par- that are from the same nationality. Like there's a German uh, – Trio. There's a Russian trio. There's a coarse trio. There's an Italian trio. And they're from. They're e- yeah, they're ex- cells. Uh, there you go. They're either former mafia or they're former SS or whatever the case may be. Former Union, uh, Union Corse, which we'll talk about in, in a movie uh, soon enough. Uh, they're, they're well, former Union Corse are, are inspectors. So they get all these gangsters and terrorists and, and they hire them inspector but they remain in these like national cells which i thought was kind of an interesting little i guess for communication purposes it yeah. simplifies things so and blofeld's not number one no he's number two he's number two and they do this bec- to make it harder to capture them or something yeah like it's that? uh a, ro- a rotating number designation means they're harder to feels weird though it feels yeah i weird. know blofeld like, is number two no no, no. <laughs> hey, go, uh, wait, wait, what's that voice? No, oh, that's the Imperial. <laughs> My uh, dear Prime Minister. Oh, no, that's the film. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> um, so that's... Uh, that, 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 and they discussed the plan. The plan is going... That's the thing, because the some of the the the, the, the storyline is broken. You go back and forth chronologically i mean sometimes you're they're in the planning stage and you go a chapter and they're doing it and you go back like it, 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 the mm. timeline's a little bit broken mm. and i don't really ultimately the encounter between count lippy and bond at shrublands meaningless how is that negatively impact i think they it's been delayed for a couple of weeks or something like that but it's really not a big deal it's really i i honestly it's a uh, I never understood that part in the book and in the film. Um, I'll, I'll, we'll discuss it when we get there. But in the book, it's like, okay, uh, he noticed that he had a, a tongue uh, mm-hmm. tattoo. Uh, after after no, uh, Lippy notices that Bond noticed, uh, he traps him in the rack. Uh, where, um, after that. Stretchy. And then for revenge, Bond does something similar where he traps him in the Turkish bat, boils him alive. And both and later on, um, as Bond's le- leaving uh, M, uh, his, his apartment, uh, he attempts to ki- kill him. Or Leapy is assassinated by a specter, uh, yeah. by a specter assassin. So that, for Bond, it's just okay. <laughs> Whatevs. Yeah, they even ask him like, "Hey, who do you think killed you? I don't know, some old enemy." <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, it's like okay. Again, it's 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 an entertaining read. It just really doesn't have much of a bearing on the plot. So again, I, I I have conflicted feelings about this book. It's 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 well written. It just doesn't. I'm just not sure it holds together from start to finish. So uh, it needs a little bit polish. Yeah, uh, needs some cutting. Needs some trimming. Yeah. So um, yes. Cut and trim. So yes. some, maybe there should have been a third collection of short stories, and it would have been three or four episodes of this Thunderball book. You know, I would. Yeah, that would make more. Yeah, call it Thunderball. <laughs> Thunderballs. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, so, and then uh, we meet Giuseppe Petacci. I thought it was Petacci. C H in Italian doesn't that make the K sound? But there are two C's, so is it Petacci? I always said Petacci. I think the in one of the movies they say Petacci. I'm not but sure. But it's written. Uh, but it's written. Yeah, but I think they're saying it wrong because it's written C H. But there's a second C in his name, so maybe it is Petacci. I, I always know. said Petacci. I'm, I'm pretty sure our Italian. Ciao, belli. Di Roma, you know, if you're listening, you know, Correct CH us. makes a K sound, right? I'm pretty sure I've learned that. I don't speak Italian fluently, but I know a little bit of it. Um, yeah, but so, Patachi, we'll, we'll go with Patachi, whatever. 
Yeah, so we see him, which again, what a funny little pa- this paragraph. This pa- this uh, chapter is like fifteen pages long, and he's just, I, I kind of liked him. Uh, he's okay, I guess. But he, he's funny, but but it's it's those characters that, dude, you you are in over your head. You don't realize how screwed up you are. You're going to your doom smiles and <laughs> yeah. he's thinking about the cars he'll have and the money he'll make the and the women he'll get and, and he gets a knife through the uh, the old the old knife through the neck up into the brain the treatment. brain is just like oh and he's happy that he came up with the joke oh, uh, delivery of one uh, uh, bomber with two nuclear bombs uh, signed here to, for delivery and then gets yeah. uh, like he's, he's happy he's like ha, 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 I did it and I mean, I guess it goes to show how ruthless Spectre are. Once they've used you, they'll, they'll, they'll dispatch you. They'll, they'll uh, Cause cut overhead. Because <laughs> he's completely bought and paid for. I mean, he's not... Uh, when you compare to the both live-action movies they did, he's not... Uh, he's not a double, and he's no. not uh, a dope fiend. He's just happily going yeah. with the plan he's, yeah no he's really he's in it to win it he's a he's a complete tool he's a patsy and a, and he doesn't realize it until he has something stuck in his uh, brains yeah so it's again that's a strange paragraph because it's a very detailed paragraph yeah. about how he poisons the his his co-pilot and the people in the other room <laughs> whatever those things are and how long it takes to get there. And then he has to change direct tra- trajectory. And he's reading the map. And it's like, and he just dies. Um, so he did. And then we we, we, we bugger off to... Uh, the Disco Volante. Yes, it's true. We still don't see Bond in Nassau. That's another thing. I know Bond is in Nassau, like at page 100 in this uh, book. Chapter 11. <laughs> Half the book is done. It, it, it's it's ridiculous. And it's, uh, it, it, is, it, it is a problem with... And every iteration of that story, it it takes its time. Mm. Uh, but I love that chapter. The the, the way Largo is described, uh, yeah, I like it too. He's yes. a pirate. Well, no, he's not a pirate, but he's a he's a uh, no, so, he's a pirate in the movie. In the book, he is like a physical specimen. He's yeah. not that much older than Bond. He's pretty young. He's like yeah. forty years old or something like that. He's a former like water ski champion. Yeah, massive hands. Looks like a um, a Roman. From um, the gladiator, the gladiator, the, the coins, yeah, and he's just massive. And they describe him, like you said, as a pirate, which explains why he wears an eye patch in the movie. Yeah, I'm like, when I read that passage, I'm like, oh, that's why. And I'm, I thought myself, if I had to explain to a 12 uh, year old that the villain was a pirate, what would I do if I wanted to feature that cinematically? Oh, you give him an eye patch. <laughs> oh, jeez, makes perfect sense. Uh, but he's big and he's yeah. muscular burly. burly and he's yeah he's about it's a couple of years but yeah no he's not he's not the senior citizen that he seems to be in the, the first no. iteration in the, in the film yeah no he's much younger he's much more spry and uh, but he's he's very cunning he's very calm i like the fleming's description where he says he's a calm leader and when you're a calm leader you'll earn the respect and you're your minions will be calm as well. So he doesn't get very excited, unlike Dr. Coates. He's like, <laughs> he doesn't, even when things are going well, he stays calm. He yeah. never shows his emotion. He keeps calm no matter what's going on. And yeah, Dr. Cuts, 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 Dr. Klutz. Klutz. <laughs> it's a character that is in both. Uh, cinematic interpretation, but he's different in each one. Yeah, it's very different. Actually, so it's kind of annoying. This, the, in this in this book, he he's uh, rather excitable. Like he he is uh, not calm. I'm trying to think <laughs> I love the passage where uh, he's doing something on the bomb, and he's very excited. And uh, Largo looks at him like, "Yeah, I'm not I'm not toying with that. I I value my sex life way too much." Yes, yes, that was pretty good. <laughs> I'm like. Good, good for you. Good idea. Mm. Well, speaking of sex life, he has a partner right now. Oh, yeah. Who we meet in the next chapter, I yeah. would have to imagine. The no, chapter number 11, Domino. Domino. Uh, Vitali. 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 Uh, so she, basically, the description we get of her and through her dialogue, she's basically, she is uh, the Domino and the Fiona Volpe in one. She has yes. a fiery attitude. Yes. Um, Yes, very independent-minded. 
she has like a not a tough looking face, but there's a funny description of her face. She, she's very good looking. She's a beautiful woman. She's also uh, an actress. Uh, she tried to be an actress. Yeah. And I'm, 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 I'm honestly, I would have to look at the timeline if it would actually match. But I think she's based on. It seems to me she might be Sophia Loren. I was thinking the same thing. Feels, actually. feels like uh, it. Like if I was casting if a they movie, film this like the year it came out, they might have cast her. Yeah. Yeah. Not, that's more or less what I was thinking. I was like, yeah, that seems like Sophia. Like the, I've I've never seen a movie with her, but the image I got from the pictures and the interviews, uh, she did movies in the '90s that I saw clips of. That's the impression, like a fiery lady. Mm. That's that's something that surprised me going back to the book because in the film, in both versions of the movie, the movie she kept a woman. She, yeah, she's much tamer. Yeah, she's much, much tamer. like calmer. And this one is like. She has an attitude. She's, she's kind of fun. Yeah, she's kind of fun. She's not the amorphous blob. She's not necessarily at the top of the list, but at least, you know, we don't mind spending time with her. And, and they have a little meet cute uh, <laughs> at the at the dépanneur uh, <laughs> getting cigarettes. Grocery store. <laughs> uh, yeah, she's getting cigarettes. She wants cigarettes that to help her quit. <laughs> and Bon sh- shows I'm, up and says... I've said, tried that. Yeah, it's like, I'm an expert in Which quitting. is funny because he did actually try quitting through his time at Shrublin. So it's a bit of like a callback to the further part of the book, you know, again, which is why I find this one to be one of the more comical novels. I like, I sort of like the lighter tone this one has. <laughs> it feels more like the movies, even though like the tone that the movie, yeah, which is funny because the first one hasn't come out yet, Yeah, but maybe he had a, he, maybe he had a sense of where they were going. But again, it's, it's a treatment. Uh, it's, no, excuse me, rather the other way around. It's the book that resulted from a film treatment. So, I would have to imagine the original script or whatever version of the script Whittingham and Fleming wrote and, and McClory wrote like, maybe had that special tone about it. So that sort of bled into the novel. Uh, I'm just speculating. Yeah, honest. no, but... Uh, I'm well, spectrolating. Uh, <laughs> that should be a title of uh, an episode, spectrolating. Um, then we meet uh, the man from the CIA. Felix is back. <laughs> well, he, he, I guess for his... For security purposes, he's flying under a different name. So Bond doesn't know who's got yeah. his Larkin fellow. and But it turns out to be uh, his old buddy, Good old Felix. Felix Slider. Good old Felix. Felix, you old fool. <laughs> uh, with his hook. With his hook. Still got his hook. Still, still got his hook. Um, I actually kind of... I liked him. Uh, he's, he, he, he's... He's able, cool. Yeah, he's always cool. I, this to me feels a lot like uh, the passages from Live and Let Die, uh, the passages from Diamonds Are Forever. We get these long sequences, these long chapters, whether they're in a, a, a chopper, you know, perusing uh, the Bahamas trying to find the plane, or they're just out for, for a drink and they're just chatting away about what they're going to do, or if they're at the governor's house and they're trying to figure out what the next step is because, you know, well, we don't have much to go on, but maybe the bombs are in the vicinity. Like, they have a great rapport. And I've always liked Felix Leiter as a character. Fleming Fleming seems... My, my feeling is that Fleming loves writing Felix. I you think he <laughs> loves writing Felix. He makes him so fun and that fast-talking, very American way of talking. But I love the, t- the time they spend in a restaurant where they get some uh, olive martinis. And yeah. Felix is like, you know, come over here. I know what you're doing to us right here. You got this many, you got this many olives in here. You got this many liters in the bottle. If you take this, and like, he basically schools some out of like, I know how you're trying to screw me. <laughs> so I can complain to the tourist board and have you shut down. Or you can actually serve me a vodka martini that makes some sense. Yeah. <laughs> Not oil, uh, uh, olives with a um, little bit of alcohol in yeah. them. Um, and then uh, Bond meets Largo. They tour the Disco Volente. So pretending they want to buy prop- they're pretending they're buying property and they're eyeing Palmira, Palmira which is yeah. where uh, Largo's estate is. But that's kind of a weird little. Again, that's maybe one of the chapters I'm, uh, I was least fond of i didn't really like they're sort of shooting the shit like oh the prices of these states around here these yeah. days i'm like why are it's they talking about this what are they trying to do what what they're trying to do is that flighter has the geiger counter on his watch and he's like playing with it that's why he keeps checking the time um to see if the bombs are on the plane these nuclear arms are on the, pl- uh, the plane no the, the boat the, the boat. disco the flying saucer 
Um, but I didn't find like their, their I didn't find their 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 uh, play acting very interesting. No, and uh, the the cover and that's a, that's a, something that makes this book a little bit quaint, a little bit like um, because they have a cover for uh, their operation. The, uh, they say that they are treasure hunters, and they have this entire <laughs> cover. Largo, yeah, yeah, Largo, and Bond and Felix. I'm like, oh, we can't we can't get him because he has the perfect alibi. I'm like, I'm we're li- living in a post nine eleven world. If a government suspects that you are a terrorist or something. They're not going to, oh, he has a, an alibi. We can't arrest him. They're just going to grab you in the middle of the night, and that's going to be uh, the end of you. Well, the book, I, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. The the book does try to wiggle its way out of that. They say, well, it's the it's the perfect alibi for this reason. It's also the perfect alibi for that reason. Oh, yeah. it's also the perfect alibi for this. Like, the setup is solid. Why wouldn't the government just say, well, well, then again, the, the, and their backgrounds are clear, apparently. Yeah. Well, some so of them like, suspect. Some, some of them are suspect, so I guess they could be held for, uh, for questioning under suspicion. Why don't they do that? I don't know. I didn't live in that te- time period, and I don't, don't know what the laws were. So, were. Were there laws that would have allowed them to do that? I mean, the, I, I, I would, I'm going to give I'm going to give Fleming a little bit more credit. I, I think he does try to make us understand why their alibi is so strong. You know, they don't. It's not like they get off the the disco volante the first time and like, well, we can't do anything. It's like <laughs> we find out how tight their yeah, alibi no, they, is. Yeah, no, they they, they they talk about almost everything. Uh, they prepare but, for every contingency except Bond. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they uh, then they have their interaction at the casino or Bond. That's uh, a fun little moment. I kind of liked it. Yeah, because Largo is Largo. Is you know, hey, my friend, Mister Bond. Let's play a game of whatever this game is called. And Bond basically just cleans him out. <laughs> yeah, and his adi- Largo's attitude shifts with every hand. He's like, hey, he's Buddy, uh, just, I spell. Uh, hey, just, I'll give you a <laughs> second game here. <laughs> By the end of the third game, it's like oh, you the specter of defeat. You little pecker <laughs> sucker. Uh, yeah, the spe- and yes, the wordplay, the specter wordplay. I had forgotten that's in the book. That's that, that, that's kind of funny. That's, Again, it's that reminds me of uh, the interaction between him and Hugo Drax and, and Moonraker. It's something that he's going to play with words just to mess with mm. the villain. Or uh, Brosnan and Elliot Carver. Oh, if I'd be. A wash, lost at sea. <laughs> <laughs> that's like a really guy. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of cool. And of course, uh, Bond is a good winner, so he offers a domino, a drink. And that's when he learns because we, uh, she. It's an assumed name. Uh, Vitali is not her name. Mm. That's where mm. we find out that. Yes, I can't remember what her real name is. Uh, it, well, it's uh, Pitachi. Well, no, oh, her right, assumed name is Vitali. She's going under P- Vitali, but her name is Pitachi. Exactly. Of course, it's Pitachi. She's the guy's brother. <laughs> Sorry, but um, that's when she uh, Bond learns that they're they're, they're related, mm-hmm. and it's never it's never uh, brought up that it's part of their plan that he's blackmailing her. Which I mean, if I'm going to write the the story for for Thunderbolt, and tell, are you telling me that the guy they use to steal the bombs that they kill their pet their Patsy is brother with the girl that the villain is. Spoon, spoonching on the side. I mean, spoonching. I'm inventing my own words. Um, Have you ha- thought of something? Yeah, no, what I don't want to use uh, any. No, 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 no. But I mean, Spectre. Like, wouldn't Spectre have like? I hear what you're saying. Wouldn't have Spectre planned for that? Yeah, I mean, uh, that, that seems like nobody thought of that. It, it it should have been either part of their plan, or we're blackmailing you. Uh, we have your sister. Uh, if you don't do this, we're gonna kill her. Which makes Perfect sense, and then now we just—it's a coincidence. Yeah, it's a really weird coincidence, it's which a, is, goes completely unexplained. They should have used that in their plot, and it's, it seems like an afterthought. However, however, on the topic of sequences that I quite enjoyed, but that have no bearing on the plot whatsoever, is uh, Domino's story about the players package. I thought that was so. You know what? I'm going to tell you a little. I'm going to tell you a little story. Uh, I read this book over – I finished it early this week, but the, the big chunk of it, I read it on uh, – I think it was Sunday. Mm-hmm. It was Sunday. And uh, I left I left the apartment. It was a beautiful day. It was a warm day. So I just actually went across the bridge to Verdun and sat down and said, okay, 
going to get through this book, or at least most of it anyways. And it was that afternoon that I read that passage. And I don't know, was it just because it was a beautiful day? Was it because I was, I was, I, I like uh, Domino, I like her character? I thought that was such like, like a sweet passage of the book. Like, that's kind of cute that she would like think up a story like that because she's looking for, I, I was, you know, I what do the kids say? I was getting the feels, like yeah. reading this passage, like completely out of left field. You have no idea why it's in this book. It doesn't have to be in this book. It's completely made up. Also. But it's, yeah, of course, it's completely made up. Yeah, it's her, f- fan- it's her fantasy of like what this hero, the, the life, because mm-hmm. inside of the packet, it's also the same guy, but much older. I can't put my finger on it. I just, I really, really enjoy that story. It, it, it shows that she's, uh, she's creative and she's, She's a bit of a romantic, despite yeah. despite her uh, the uh, the attitude she gives to some people. She's a bit of a romantic. Yeah, no, she she she's not completely broken down by life. She's in control of what uh, I mean. She she uh, she's a mistress for for uh, Largo, but she's in control of her. Like when she tires or when he like they're if they didn't have the plan mm-hmm. to blow up the world. She would have called it quits eventually, yeah, and she, like she did that before. You find out that she's been uh, after her, act, her, her career as an actress, more or less, uh, petered out. She's been like, to stay uh, on the same um, life, keep her lifestyle going. That's what she's been doing. Mm-hmm. She's in control. She's people like people on their bikes passing by looked at me a little funny because I was like, "Aww, <laughs> really? No." <laughs> <laughs> um. And then we have a good sequence because they're still they're still investigating yes. Largos, uh, swimming the gun. They're, they're, they're trying to find the, the plane as the well. The plane. So they go in a helicopter. I no, think that's it the, is. that's later. They uh, they go uh, swimming to investigate the, the the hall of the Disco Volante. Ah, yes, that's true. I forgot that passage in the book. Uh, so what happens? In that? <laughs> I don't remember uh, that one. But basically, uh, Bond investigates, takes a few pictures. Uh, some guards notice them, charge and attack him. Uh, uh, stabby, yeah. stabby. Yeah, he gets hit in the head, I think, with the butt of a gun. Yeah. Like that, yeah. And um, uh, Barracuda, I think, bites one of the guys. Yes, 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 yes. Because I think Bond is pretty much uh, a dead man. The guy has him in sights. And so he moves or he, like, his back arches. That's because the Barracuda started taking a bite out of him. And look, apparently it's really revolting. Like even Bond is mm-hmm. like, yeah, he has to <laughs> like swallow his own, swallow his own vomit. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> it, well, there's another gross passage that comes later on. The one I thought we were going to talk about now, which is when they find the plane. The Vindicator. Uh, the Vindicator. The plane. The plane. Uh, well, the, I mean, the, they were vindicated uh, for, their, for their persistence in <laughs> finding the plane. And Bond decides to go... Um, so I used to go deep. And apparently this, it smells horrible. <laughs> there are octopi everywhere. And sharks. Like, uh, this, sharks and octopi that, that are like holding one of the cadavers. Yeah. They lift it at one point. It, it's, it reads like something out of a horror novel. They, at first they don't see, but he, Bon doesn't see the plane. He just notices there's a lot of sharks there. Mm. So he, he, they land the, the seaplane. He, they shoot one of the sharks. They, they wouldn't do that today. Um, <laughs> uh, he goes swimming, and that's you know, he, he discovers, he finds the the plane. Exactly, and uh, but the the bombs are not there. Obviously, are they there? He gets no, the ma- the medals of uh, the corpse of uh, Pitachi. Yes, so it's it's now official that Pitachi is 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 dead in in Bond's in Bond's mind. Uh, but I just I can't I can't like shake off some of Fleming's descriptions of how, how dark and eerie and apparently the waters, but how would it not be putrid if there are like 10 cadavers in this plane just floating for yeah. days already? So it must be disgusting. And just this, this description, I, 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 I would read it, but I don't remember what page it's on, but I, I, I feel like there are octopus that are like clinging to one of the bodies. At yeah, one like, point, Bond gets a few octopus on them and he has to like Ugh. Term, yeah, it's disgusting. Really disgusting. I felt I had to swallow my own vomit when yeah, I was reading that. It's a bit gross. Mm-hmm. And um, I love the, the 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 next chapter, the title of the next chapter, How to Eat a Girl. Mm. <laughs> yes. 
Yes, uh, that is the chapter where Bond uh, confesses that he's he's yeah. there for a reason. He's he's not treasure hunting, or no, he's oh, not. No, no, he's no, not no, no, that's, that's the chapter after because oh, yeah. that's the chapter where the the boinched underwater. Mm. They, no, they, it's not underwater. They, I think it's on the beach. That's in the movie. That's underwater. What am I saying? Uh, this is where things get confusing because <laughs> a lot of things happen, but some details change. Um, like she gets injured. I think a sea urchin. It's a like a sea. It's an egg of some. They they call them eggs. I don't know what kind of an egg gets into your skin like that and has sharpy sharp ends. But whatever, some sort of egg went into her uh, foot. Foot. So he's got to suck it out, um, and she has to suck it up because <laughs> apparently it hurts. It hurts. She, she, she. And then the, the, after that, the, the next chapter, when the kissing stop, um, that's when, after he's done what he had to do for Queen and Godfrey, um, that's when he tells her that uh, your brother's dead, Domino, and your yeah. Lago killed him. And, and she has, she goes through a range of emotions in this chapter. She hits Bond for a quick moment because I think she, well, I mean, I guess her instinct is that, you know, she's been used. This is after they've made love. Yeah. This is after they've fornicated. Mm -hmm. uh, so she hates him for that. But as Bond, you know, but, you know, he's a, he's, he's a pro. He's been at, he's not his first rodeo. So he explains, look, there's, despite your brother's death, there is something bigger at stake here. Okay, this is what's happening. This is who Largo is. This is what the consequences for, for the world are, or at least put, not the world, but the... Uh, either there's a rocket launch site that might be attacked and then possibly an American city, I think. And, you know, thousands of people will die. I need you to help me. And here's how you can help me. Take this Geiger counter, go back to the flying saucer. <laughs> I, like the, <laughs> I do like the part where he says, now, if the Geiger counter shows you that the bomb's on the boat, <laughs> uh, turn your light on, on and off, like a retarded person. <laughs> and she's like, Man, this she she literally replied like, "Man, this is real life. I'm not gonna do something that stupid. I'll just go on deck. And when your men see me on deck, it'll mean yes, the boats. Uh, I can't speak today. Yes, the the bombs are on the boat. I do like that little like. What are you talking about turning on my light? I'm not a. <laughs> do I look retarded <laughs> or something? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Okay, fine. We'll do it. We'll do it your way. <laughs> uh, and oh yeah, that's um, then. Uh, next chapter is uh, time for decision, and that I think the submarine. I guess yeah, that's the manta, the, the manta the submarine. Manta. And now, they're taking a lot. They're taking. I mean, we know that Largo, you know, is the real deal. But at this point, Felix and Bond do not. So they keep telling themselves like, we have to talk to the Marines. We have to talk to the local governor. We might be way out in left field. Like this could blow up in our faces, but we have to forge ahead. We have to believe in what evidence we have. Of course, the discovery of the uh, of the vindicator helps a lot. Yeah. Obviously. And yeah, so Felix calls in all his friends from the CIA. A whole submarine shows up. Yeah, a nuclear submarine too. Exactly. Exactly. And they get along very well with the captain. Captain yeah. seems to has a captain good sense of Peter humor about Peterson. it. Peterson. Yeah. Peter Peterson. Peterson, yeah. Peterson, okay. <laughs> it's funny. How original. Uh, yeah, um, because Domino Domino gets um, gets captured yes. at, at the same time. Pretty much the same time. Uh, She's taking pictures with that cap on. We don't. We don't. Unlike in the film, we don't witness it in the book. We learn about it uh, during the final uh, huddle before their operation is put into effect. Largo's like, Those, here's the update. My woman, my woman, oh, she's a traitor. <laughs> so I had to torture her a little bit. She's taken care of. Uh, are we all good? And, of course, there's this Russian guy that's like, no, we are not good. I have this feeling that... And Largo's basically replies, well, I think there's a way we can solve our differences. Boom! Busts a cap in his ass. Number 10. Yeah. Which is, weird. again, cool. Although we saw a traitor perish earlier when Blofeld yeah, gave him a shock. Tra it feels like the same thing the again. Same beat repeating. And why are we repeating. doing this with about 40 pages left in the book? With 30, 20 pages Honestly, left when I read them, I'm like, really? Why is this guy trying to bullshit his way out of it? Not bullshit his way. Why is he trying to disturb the peace, so to speak? 
now. Yeah, you, you, you're you going to need all what the manpower power you, you, you need, uh, you, you can get. So why do you, why do you shoot him? Yeah. Um, well, you need a, he runs a tight ship, man. Yeah, very tight. <laughs> Cutting overhead. And um, this is basically the, the, where the uh, the book starts wrapping up. I mean, it's a really, for, for a 260 page novel where there's so many little non sequiturs or what appear to be non sequiturs. Uh, this one's over like that. Yeah, <laughs> they, they they send the the, the marines out. Um, they underwater. S- like, so basically, what they're do- what they're doing, they're trying. They figured out. I can't remember how, but they figured out by which route uh, Largo Inspector's men will go to carry uh, the bombs. Mm-hmm. So they said, "Well, we'll we'll intercept them through this route. You know, we'll leave the sub." I need some men who volunteers. Some of them volunteer, so we'll, and we'll intercept them, and, and we'll have a just a good old fashioned roughhousing underwater, <laughs> which is what happens. Um, I like, um, I love Largo's chariot. His underwater chariot. Oh yeah, that's kind of cool. He's like sitting on it. Like I actually, I didn't really, I, I figured what it was, but I googled it. Like a chariot, Italian chariot. It's kind of cool. Oh, really? It's like this thing you, that goes underwater. It is. A, it's, it almost looks like a submarine missile, but there's a seat on it. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. I'm like that's badass. I like Largo. <laughs> it, it, actually, yeah. Uh, the villains we had, uh, he's he's a little bit more hands on than a lot of them have yeah. been. Like he gets involved in the action. He's the youngest. He's the youngest, I think. Anyways, and I think he's he's a. Fairly fit sp- physical oh, yeah, specimen. I mean, well, it was just a few years ago he was like a water skiing champion in various other sports. He went to the Olympics or something yes, like yes, that. Yes, 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 yes. So, yeah, I mean, this guy can... I love his cover that he's... Oh, I just inherited my wealth. That's his cover. Yeah. Okay. Great. See, I'm telling you, there are, this alibi they have, it's foolproof. It's foolproof. You can't defeat them. Oh, and, and if, uh, if they get away, uh, they can always say that, oh, we got attacked. It's not our fault. Uh, we thought that we were a little like criminals, blah, blah. They always, they always think of excuses that the villains can come up with to, to, to get out of trouble. I'm like, okay, dude, you, you, you're literally fighting. Like, just, just get, get it done. Mm-hmm. Eventually, Bond is trapped. Exactly. Well, this looks like it looks like this is the last book. We're this not going to get another Bond book. <laughs> this is the man with the golden gun. A few uh, books earlier, and uh, uh, just as he's going for the kill, um, cause he's carrying an octopus in his hands. Yes, he Bond is Bond is is fatigued at this point and injured. So Largo not only is he is he is he an impressive physical specimen, but I guess because he was just riding on his chair and not part of the fight, he's in better shape than Bond yeah. is right now. And yes, he takes this octopus. It felt like he was doing it in a mocking manner. Like, yeah. I'm going to put this in your face or something like that. I don't know why he's doing that. Just to mess with Bond. Bond <laughs> g- grabs a, uh, a rock and uh, he do- he, I think he tries to dudge him and eventually um, uh, uh, he puts the octopus in, in, in his face and uh, he's... he's uh, one of the last things he sees is uh, somebody else. Like uh, he thinks it's one of his men's going there, so he's trying to avoid. And uh, just as Lago is trying to to kill him, uh, he stops suddenly, and he re- he's able to remove his mask, and he realizes it's Domino that 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 yeah. killed him. There's a spear in his neck, I yeah. think. Very grisly, grisly demise. Quick demise, though. You Quick. probably don't last long when there's a spear. Piercing if, through your neck. If you don't lose all your blood, uh, one of the fishes around is going to get because the fishes have, have been agitated. Well, that barracuda from Earth, they only ate one dude, so yeah. you know, why don't you chow down on this? Delicio. Um, <laughs> it's pretty much like the end here. Oh, I, I the f- the end is so funny. Um, they're in the so they're in the the hospital resting from their wounds. I mean, uh, Domino has been tortured with. Uh, I think it's like in the movie. Doesn't Largo describe that he took ice in his cigar? I feel like he does something like he does in the movie. Uh, so, so she's a little bit out of it. Bond is definitely out of it because he he suffered some injuries through the underwater battle, and he, <laughs> he's visited by the doctor. And all Bond wants to know: Where's the girl? Where's the girl? He's shaking this doctor. Uh, finds out where Domino is. Goes to see her. And he's at her bedside, and he's so tired 
that he falls asleep on the floor next to her bed. It felt like he, like a, you know, when a dog, when your dog sleeps next to you and he's on the floor. <laughs> it felt like that's what Fleming was describing. I don't know if that was the intent, but that that got a good chuckle out of me. And that's how the book ends. Bond is sleeping like a good little guardian dog by Domino's side. I'm like, are you are you serious? This is how we're ending this thing. <laughs> it's cute. <laughs> it's cute. I mean, um. Uh, before we go with thoughts of feelings, I'm going to go th- quickly uh, to the year 1961. 1961. This is the year that um, uh, Kennedy was inaugurated, sworn in on January 20th. The first time that um, they sent somebody in space. Ga- 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 um, Russian, Yuri Gagarin. Yuri Gagarin um, did his uh, flight. Yuba City crash. It, uh, there was a, a B-52. Yeah, March 13th, uh, 1961. That crashed near Yuba City in uh, California. Um, um, problem with the, 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 the fuel, the, the, the fuel gauge was not working properly, so they had less gas than the fuel that they, they, they required to finish their course, and so they had to evacuate the plane. But the interesting thing about that plane, it had two nuclear warheads mm-hmm. um, in them. The, thankfully, the, the warheads didn't uh, explode, but it's still very interesting because it's, it seems like something from from Thunderball, actually. Uh, the launch of the Apollo program, which uh, coincidentally is it's something that's um, uh, sort of um, echoed in some of the Bond movies, the race to the to, to, yep. to the moon. Um, oh, Doctor No, for for one, exactly. Uh, the Soviet submarine K nineteen. That's reactor leak. Yeah, the Widowmaker. <laughs> they made a movie about it. Um, Births in 1961. Now, I didn't find that many Bond uh, alumni. Uh, Wayne Gretzky was born. Rob Collier, born in 1961. Uh, George Clooney, born in 1961. Eddie Murphy. I'm Batman. Hey, Freeze. I'm Batman. (laughs) That's the that's the the best. uh, I'm Batman. So that's more or less the year 1961. Gives you a, a feeling of what it was like. Or what happened during that year, where the world was at. Um, so the Cold World was still... Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, the whole nuclear arms race was a big thing at that yeah. point. I oh, mean, the Cuban Bay Missile of, Crisis. The Bay of Pigs. I forgot about the Bay of Pigs. Yeah. The uh, attempt at the uh, an invasion from this, of the CIA of uh, Cuba, which failed miserably. After two days, they were ran out of Cuba. And that's the, the, they cut diplomatic ties with Cuba at the beginning of the year. So... Uh, it's an interesting thing, time to be alive uh, in, in, the, in the 1960s. You know, the, the, the Hiroshima wasn't that long ago, no. really. So I think the memories of, of nuclear armament and destruction and fallout. And they're still are testing still weapons. Fresh. Yeah, I mean, well, they're fresh in everybody's minds. So the, the potentiality of. of uh, well, you gave the example of of the plane that that crashed there with the, with the with the warheads on it. I mean, that was probably on everybody's mind. I mean, today it's more you know cloak and dagger drugs, special drugs like uh, biological warfare, so yeah. to speak. But back in the fifties and sixties, yeah, it was these nuclear warheads had everybody shitting bricks. That was the uh, the, the new thing. But uh, today they have so many, 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 many ways to destroy the world. So mm-hmm. that's... These crazy bombs where like, you know, it, it sucks the air out. I don't know. I don't know what it does, or it makes your your globule rouge go burst. Like just the weirdest bombs. Yeah, like, I would not want to see the effects of what some of those uh, detonators do. Uh, speaking of feelings, search your feelings. You know them to be true. What do you think of Thunderball the book? It's um, it's not Moonraker, but it's not Diamonds Are Forever. It's it's no, it's called Thunderball. <laughs> no, but I mean, it, where where it, it it is in my appreciation, it's in the middle, but it tends to be a little bit higher in mm. the middle. It's not it's not heading towards diamonds are forever. It's heading more towards uh, moon records. Probably on par. You know what? Maybe Casino Oil because Casino Oil, as much as I enjoyed it, it's it, 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 Fleming wrote better books. Oh, he did write better books. I would agree. It's kind of what, it's another Casino Royale though, much longer. Uh, and a little bit more long-winded yeah. than Casino Royale. Casino Royale is very, very to the point. Yeah, it's a very succinct uh, structure to it. Whereas Thunderball is is the opposite. It's not succinct there at all. There are so many deviations, and it's uh, 
it needs a, it needed a tightening um, in in uh, editing there's segments that yeah are. i don't know if it would have been done by Fleming himself or, or 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 an editor at the publishing house but regardless of who could have done that job i feel like somebody was required to do it uh, again not to say that i don't like the book it it is an enjoyable read when i was done with it i said you know that was good but we've we've read better we may still read better uh, but I don't regret having revisited it. It's, it's just has a, it has a strange structure to it. You can yeah. you can tell this one's just taking a while to get to the point. It's weird. It's a weird book. Yeah. So there you have it. Thus ends our review of Thunderball, nineteen sixty one. Yeah. There's a lot more uh, to come. Uh, shall we share uh, where we are on? Social media. We have people everywhere. That's right. It's having supper with your wife, with your children. <laughs> uh, so there's the triple w dot the james bond complex dot com. Uh, we have a Facebook page. Search for search for us at the James Bond Complex. We're at Twitter at the Bond Complex. We're on Instagram at the James Bond Complex. There is also a YouTube channel. Please search for the James Bond Complex and subscribe. It'll uh, boost some of our numbers there. Like and subscribe, please, please, please. And, and you can uh, download, you can rate and, and, and listen to us on, on Google Play. Actually, I'm forgetting Anchor.com, who actually host us. Thank you very much. But we're at Google Play, so just Google us, and you can find us there. And as well as iTunes, give us a glowing 005-star uh, review, rating and review on iTunes. Uh, I am on Twitter at 00pop. That's the word double underscore OH underscore pop. I'm at Matt Claire with two T's. The two T's, dos T's. And just as James Bond has a nasty, nasty habit of returning, so too with the James Bond complex in Thunderball the Film, 1965. Uh, merci beaucoup et à la prochaine. Au revoir!